Hi everyone, this is Ryan Hoyme, aka Massage Nerd, and today we have a special guest, Susan G. Salvo, and she completed a 1,000 hour program at the New Mexico School of Natural Therapeutics in 1982. She owns and operates Bodywork uh, Massage Therapy by Susan Salvo and Associates, which she founded in Lake Charles, Louisiana in 1983. In 1980, um, 1987, Su Susan Salvo opened the Louisiana Institute of Massage Therapy in Lake Charles, which is a premier massage school. Susan Salvo is a nationally known author, um, having written Massage Therapy Principles and Practice and Mosby's Guide to Pathology for the Massage Therapist, both published by Elsevier. Susan was also awarded the Teacher of the Year Award and also inducted into the Massage Therapy Hall of Fame this year, along with many other awards over the past few years. And the reason why I stopped it here, because otherwise it would take about 15 minutes to do all your bio, so. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan, yeah. for the intro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got a, quite a long, lengthy bio, so that, that was awesome. A lot of different awards and... Um, it's just amazing what you have accomplished over all these years. I've had some great opportunities. Yep, definitely. And just to let you know, too, I, I mentioned you this before, but yours, your book was the first book that I used when I'm teaching over, a little over 10 years ago and stuff. So we still got it ingrained in my head. So. <laughs> well, the, the new edition is so different. I hope you get a chance to play with it. Yeah, definitely. Yep. <laughs> so, um... You know, back in the 90s when I went to massage school, I mean, cancer and massage, that was just, I mean, you're supposed to stay away from it, get a doctor's permission and stuff like that. How, how would you say it's changed over the years? Well, we have more information now about cancer than we did. And really, we've seen the same thing happen when, when uh, AIDS was first um, become more prevalent. We had a whole lot of misconceptions about it. There was a lot of fear surrounding it. Um, cancer has taken a really similar course in that over time we understand a little bit more about it. We understand more about uh, what, how it spreads and what, what, a, uh, what we should, should not do. Um, there are some precautions that we all should take, but I like you, even in some of my earlier textbooks, that was the, the knowledge of the day was that um, to not massage someone who has cancer. Uh, because it would uh, increase metastasis or the spreading of cancer. And uh, what we know now is, now is that's not true, because if it were true, then they would not recommend a person who has cancer to take a hot bath, exercise, anything that would increase circulation, and those things just are not true. So massage can be administered safely with some common sense precautions, and you can even take um, certifications advanced trainings in oncology massage or cancer and massage. Yeah, last year I went to a summit. It was held in um, um, the Twin Cities in Minnesota. I can't remember the name of the organization. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, uh, the Society of Oncology? Yeah, yeah, massage, yeah, 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 that sounds they're, great. They're one of the yeah. most leading uh, uh, yeah. organizations out there right now. Yep, and I think they have uh, around 100 members, but those people have like, hundreds of hours of training and things like that, so... Yeah, and every think think every three or four years they, they host that um, that, that summit fantastic. stuff. Yep. So it's just amazing listening to all those presenters and stuff. Um, so um, Gail McDonald, I remember, was there too and stuff. And yep. well, one of the things I'm hoping that organization does, they have not done it yet, is for myself with small children at home and and with traveling can get very expensive. I'm hoping that that society ventures more into the distance learning, into the online learning arenas. That way it can make their wonderful information more accessible. But right now it's only accessible to people who can afford to take time off and afford to travel to, to, to some, you know, some far locations. And I think, you know, I'm close to Houston, but that's just about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, with, with cancer and massage, um, I mean, I remember reading back in the day about uh, lymphoma. Is that still kind of a no-no in a way, too, with, with massage? Well, um, lymphoma in particular is a, a cancer. Well, in general, most cancers are diagnosed when they're well advanced. So the, the kinds of um, con uh, massage considerations for lymphoma would really be true for most cancers. You have to be more concerned about things like lymphedema, but most lymphedema is not caused by the cancer itself. It's caused by the, the cancer treatment, such as surgery. It um, can, can be caused by radiation because radiation can also damage 
uh, lymphatic vessels and lymphatic nodes. But um, but again, you, you just have to learn to use your common sense and take a thorough intake. And and a lot of it is um, the activity level that the client's currently doing. Because if if they're doing activities that are causing swelling, then that's going to be one thing that's going to raise a red flag to the therapist. You know, oh, I'm not going to use vigorous techniques or I'm not going to use um, a longer session to tire the client, especially if, if they're easily fatigued. So, again, a lot of it's just common sense and learning to ask the appropriate and good questions. Take a very good intake. Yep. And do you teach workshops now on cancer and massage? I do. Um, I do a distance learning uh, course. Um, nothing like the, the 1,000 or 100 hours that the uh, society is doing. But, again, just doing some basic guidelines. Um, I did a, a workshop for uh, AMTA in Louisiana. I did a workshop for National last year. I think I, you and I were together then. Yep. And then um, I'm doing one in Arizona um, coming in 2013. So just trying to get this great information out there. We do teach a abbreviated version in our entry level at the massage school in, in Louisiana. And this most of this material is in not my uh, principles of practice book, but my most piece pathology because cancer is a pathology. And um, I have an entire chapter dedicated to it. And I got to tell you a story, Ryan. Um, anytime I'm working with the textbook, I usually have the chapters reviewed heavily by at least three people. Uh, I want experts in their field, not just massage therapists, but I'm looking for nurse practitioners, um, oncologists, people who do cancer research to really look at the material and tell me, am I on the right track or not? Because this experience is important, but we have to take that experience and reflect it against the medical, the current medical knowledge of the day. And so when the chapter was finished, I uh, passed it over in one of the uh, one of the reviewers were a, was a massage therapist, and her feedback to me was like, whoa, 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 this is way too much information. <laughs> um, you need to cut back on the staging, you need to cut back on the grading, and all the little, little interesting pieces of information that I had in there, things like angiogenesis. I mean, to me, it just, it helps. I'd rather give a lot to an instructor than have the instructor decide, you know, I'm only going to focus on these sections. I try to give the instructors a lot of uh a lot of support and, get, and a lot of choices on what they can and cannot do. So I said, okay, so-and-so, I can't mention any names, yeah. <laughs> but okay, so-and-so, I want you to tell me what I should cut out. You know, yet if you think it's too much, that's fine, but what sections specifically are too much? About two weeks later, she came, comes back and she says, you know, this is great stuff. Leave it in there. So it's a pretty beefy, intense chapter. So if you are interested in cancer massage, it's a great chapter to, to look into. Um, it is an online course, as I indicated earlier, or, or uh, definitely contact some of the other great people out there that are doing cancer massage. I know that, uh, I think that, uh, oh, what's the gal's name? Tracy, uh, I want to say Watson, I think that's her name. But there's some great people out there doing some great work. Yep. And, and then do you think in massage schools, do you think they're not teaching much with cancer massage, would you say? I think that's changing. Most massage programs tend to take their information from the textbooks. So it's really kind of up to, up to the authors to kind of put the information out there. Um, most schools don't use a separate textbook just for a specific small specialty area like cancer. So they're going to rely on more of a, what I call a fundamentals uh, textbook. And so, um, again, my textbook's been out. The second edition has been out since 2009. So, again, since 2009, the schools have had access to the new material. And it in itself could be easily a 20-hour just in cancer. So, uh, so, yes, I do believe that's true, Ryan. I do believe that entry-level programs will be forced to include more of this kind of information if they're not already. Because the information is in the, in the textbooks. Yep. And do you think it's hard harder to tr um, to train the old therapists, the old instructors, and stuff? Because again, they were taught many years ago one way, and to actually come up to speed with what's going on. It can be very frustrating. Um, I did a lecture uh, in Lafayette, Louisiana, last December, and. We really did, you know, a whole section on debunking a lot of the myths 
um, one of ur urban legends, if you want to call them that, we did a thing where, okay, guys, you have to understand what you were taught in school was could have been wrong. You can massage pregnant women. You really can. You can massage people with cancer. You really can. You can massage people who are on blood thinners. You really can. Um, the whole concept we have about endangerment sites, much of it is based on myth. And so, and some people got really upset with me. And, but it was kind of fun over time. They, you know, these individuals calmed down and then they could see some of the insanity behind what we've been doing. And we are, as, as a profession, moving into more research-based uh, education. Um, the, the principles and practice book that came out this past month, um, there's a section on research literacy. So again, this is the other thing that's changing in massage curriculum is that we're moving more into you know, understanding how to locate research, how to interpret the findings, how to uh, utilize it in our practices, and then the section on massage effects. Every effect is is supported by uh, research study or studies, studies in, in most cases. And it was written by one of the ladies, um, Joellen, who was on the Massage Therapy Body of Knowledge Task Force, and she has a PhD, so you can't get much better than that. And you get athletic trainer, or she's a massage therapist. And so she was the, the contributor, Arthur, to those pieces in the textbook because um, I can't be an expert on everything, but I do know how to surround myself with some very bright people that are top notch in the field, and that's what what we try to do. Yes, definitely. And then um, for your online class, is that um, do you get um, nationally board certified for that? I mean, for continuing education credits for that too, then or? I'm just now going into that arena. Um, one of the things you'll find out about me. Brian, as I hate paperwork, it's, it's <laughs> odd because I'm an Arthur. But, uh, I really bogged down with too much uh, red tape, and um, so I'm I'm going in there kind of cautious. And if, if it takes more than a couple hours, I'll put it away and go back to it another day, or delegate it to my husband, who's really good about stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, you know, it's not something that I enjoy doing. I don't I enjoy the teaching part of it. Um, but, but all the paperwork to get everything approved is, can be kind of tedious, yep, but I'm heading in that direction. Okay. So it, it will happen then, right? <laughs> and then, and then, um, what I, I'm for my dad about four years ago, he had uh, prost his prostate removed cause he had cancer and stuff like that. And, and they didn't seem too concerned about him getting massages afterwards and stuff. So that was really nice to know because again, I got a, a, approval from his doctors and stuff. So. So all he had yeah. was this, just the, the prostatectomy, the, the removal of it? Yeah, because um, they said he had three different types of cancers. I can't remember offhand, but there's a three different types he had. So one of them was actually fast acting and stuff. So he, so they had to remove it like right then and there. So. And yep. he's fine? Yep, he's fine. But he's the only thing he's upset about is he can't give blood. So he gave blood on a regular basis, and you have to wait so many years before... You actually get blood, so <laughs> that's what he was. He's still frustrated with that. So, <laughs> and then um, for for the cancer, um, where's a good place to get um, find out the research and um, read studies and things like that on cancer and massage? Um, what I can, the best thing to do is, is to look at the internet. I mean, the, the textbooks are great, and I'm, I'm definitely uh, an advocate of textbooks. But really, they can become outdated very fast. As, as you indicated with your experience of when you went through school, the stuff that we taught, that I taught um, about cancer and about many other things are wrong. So it's really important that massage therapists stay up to date. Um, I have my favorite list of uh, cancer websites, and I could be more than happy to share with you the, those links. Um, but, but, but the National Cancer Society is a real big one. Uh, there's just a lot of really good websites that I go to for up-to-date information about cancer. Yep. And then, um, so in internet's the way. Yep. And um, do, yeah. do you know um, know of a lot of hospitals that are incorporating massage therapists in their cancer wards at all now? Do you do you see that growing at all? Um, they have a few. Um, we have an interesting, like we have a new uh, uh, chemotherapy facility here, and they they've done the insides to make it look like a spa. 
instead of a medical facility where you wear bathrobes, um, they've got soft lighting, they've got waterfalls, you know, they, they look like you go into to a retreat. And he has contacted me recently about having some massage therapist in there to do to do a light, more of a relaxation massage, nothing that could be even considered treatment related. Um, the term is palliative care, if you're familiar with that term, yep. which means comfort, comfort care. And um, I know MD Anderson utilizes massage therapy. Um, a lot of it, a lot of what I do is in services. So I would go to a, a facility, uh, and this includes hospice, and talk about massage, teach the caregivers massage, teach um, the nurses to give a to give massage. That, that you can you can use massage with massage therapy, but some of the techniques are gentle enough that can be done by uh, non massage therapists who are still in the healthcare umbrella. Okay. And we need to be able to make it more accessible. Yep. Each one teach one kind of thing. And is there certain medications that can affect things too with massage? Um, with, with cancer uh, patients? There, there yeah. is. Um, chemotherapy is what probably you're referring to. Um, most chemotherapy, you, you can take it orally, but most times it's uh, it's done intravenously. Um, there's a there's a couple of chemotherapeutic agents that do leave a residue on the skin up to 24 hours after treatment. And um, it's a couple, there's a couple of different philosophies about this. Um, you can either, what I, what I advocate is just postponing the massage till the day after. So you, you get out of that 24 hour window. Um, plus oftentimes the, the, the client is not gonna feel well enough to receive a massage. So you can, again, with that 24-hour window, they're getting the rest, and then you're postponing the massage. But you can don disposable gloves if you really feel the need or the client really does need um, the massage and uh, do the massage. Um, and you can do other uh, methods that are more touch than massage because I define massage as the manual manipulation of tissue, and sometimes that is not appropriate. So you just want to do more of a, a light, more of a touching holding, gentle foot massage, those kinds of kinds of things. But again, it's mainly the chemotherapies that you have to be concerned about. And speaking of chemotherapy, you know, if you're if you know your clients on chemotherapy, back to the thorough intake, and I've got some other stuff we can go over my little cheat sheets over here. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, you want to find out what kind of um, therapy that not therapy, yeah, therapy that they're taking, and you want to find out what side effects they have because for instance if they have chemotherapy and they have the mouth sores that go with it then maybe the face rest would not be appropriate because it would cause some pressure unnecessary pressure they may have gastrointestinal distress um, oftentimes they have things like leading to the gastrointestinal distress they may have things like diarrhea um, so you have to you know deal with that um, sometimes they may have the opposite of the diarrhea constipation um, sometimes they want their abdomen massage because there is research that says it does help reduce um, the nausea that's associated with many of the treatments that they're receiving. Um, so, you know, you want to factor all those things into it. But the best source of information, we, we talked about the Internet and, and tech textbooks and online courses and organizations. All these are fantastic. But we really need to pull into the conversation the client with the condition. They're the ones who can be a fantastic source of information, the signs and symptoms, how they're dealing with this emotionally. This entire area we haven't talked about, Ryan. They're there. They've had the diagnosis. Um, they're afraid. It is a tremendous financial stress. Um, it's a the fear of death, the fear of disfigurement, um, the fear of uh, the treatments itself. I mean, it's it's tremendous emotional uh, experience for the client and therapists need to be very sensitive about um, you know do it about when the client wants to talk when the client needs to talk and when the client doesn't want to talk and to not be intrusive with a bunch of questions I mean you want to do a third of intake but maybe they need to just be quiet maybe they need to cry maybe they need to express their frustration um, but just to be really um, one of the terms that uh, Michael Shea taught me when we were on the MTBOC task force was, and I love this, he says, seek not, forbid not. So I, I like to use that when I'm teaching about uh, clients who, who are feeling emotional when they come to massage, because you don't want to pull the emotional content out, but you definitely want to allow it when it does, because as you know, oftentimes clients will store emotional tension as muscular tension. 
And so when the muscle tension starts going down, well then, hello, I didn't realize I felt this before. And it may come up while they're on the massage table. Does that make sense? Yep, definitely. And then um, with their chemotherapy, that's um, that can go through the pores, right? So can that affect um, the massage therapist in a way too? You're talking about 24 hours or so? 24 okay. hours, all the research I've said and all, again, yeah. all the reviewers who've looked at the material that, that I put in the textbook have all said that's really still the case. It's, it's only 24 hours. And so after that, that um, the residue, I mean, when, if the client course bathes, we have to also factor that in, oh. uh, that the residue is gone and, and the massage is, is not a health, I'm sorry, that the treatment's no longer a health hazard to the therapist. Okay. And then um, Herb in the chat asked, um, how does your new textbook differ from the third edition? Oh my gosh, it's almost scary. <laughs> um, now, okay, keep in mind, I mean, you know, I've, I've, uh, working on the MT Bach was a tremendous educational transformation for me. And um, working with some fantastic people, uh, my editor called me and she says, You know, um, instructors really don't like a whole lot of changes from one edition to the next. And um, you kind of made a lot of changes. Um, I did include a chapter on self-care, which you know is very important to massage therapists. We added the section on research literacy. Um, we added, um, we, we took circulatory system units, one body system. We moved it apart. We did cardiovascular separate, then uh, the lymphatic and immune. Um, so now there's, oh, and, oh, we did a traumatic, not traumatic, although it may feel that way, <laughs> dramatic uh, change with kinesiology. We made, uh, we took all the skeletal and, and, uh, and muscular nomenclature and put it into one chap chapter called kinesiology. And after, when I was working on the fourth edition, Joe Musculino came out with this amazing textbook and uh, with kind of like the Clay Pounds book, if you're familiar with that book, where they had the um, photograph and the illustrations of the muscles drawn on top. Okay, Pretty yeah. avant-garde uh, illustration uh, methodology. And because it's an Elsevier product, I was able to use that in my textbook. So I was, and, and, and the way that they were drawn, they were drawn individually. And then you could, you could say, well, I only want to show just the six muscles of scapular movement, even though uh, this picture doesn't really exist in his textbook. So they were able to do a composite ones just because they have, have all this great uh, library of, of stuff. So those are in there. Uh, we took that same uh, concept, we call it motion photography. Um, and of course, my brother, Chris Salvo, is um, the photographer and the, and the person he and his wife, Suzanne, I dedicated the fourth edition to. Just to thank God he's my brother because he would be a very close friend of mine if, if he wasn't. <laughs> so um, what he, we would do was he would we would have the model. And I tend to not like being in, in my pictures. I want to be behind the camera to help set up the shots. <laughs> So let's let's say we're doing a shoulder mobilization. In the last textbook, we would show it in three different frames. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now what we did was we would take three different pictures and overlay them into one illustration. So it looks like picture, 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 and we had the arrows to show the direction of movement. And it's like, wow. <laughs> it, looks, it looks really cool. Yeah. So lots of changes um, I'm very excited about. And I actually, of course, did less pathology in this textbook because I wanted to move um, that into the pathology book. One big change I'm really excited about, we talked about um, in concepts of endangerment sites that um, really most of what we teach in massage schools really isn't backed by scientific research. Um, there are a few that are very serious and that included, and we're calling them cautionary sites instead of endangerment sites. Because one thing I find in the massage profession is sometimes we tend to uh, enjoy using the sensational language, <clears throat> and endangerment just it never did it for me. So um, I, I talked to other authors you know, before I made this move because I didn't want to do anything that was disruptive. But, but uh, and many. Uh, authors such as Sandy Fritz agree, you know, cautionary sites is a better term, it's more realistic. Um, but some of the new research that's coming out is uh, a lot of people like to work on the anterior throat and, you know, sort of the clonomastoid scalings and such as that. Um, but a lot of the medical community is saying that when a person has plaque in their arteries, atherosclerosis, where 
or is, is it usually found? In the carotid arteries. Yep. And oftentimes it's undiagnosed. So um, there's working, and, and there's this great picture where I show a, a cross section. I say, okay, here's the that, certain cloud of asteroid. Here's how close in proximity uh, the carotid arteries are, and how, how you can avoid it, but how difficult it is. You really have to know what you're doing. So that's one thing I'm, I'm creating a whole lot more emphasis on. And uh, uh, the abdominal uh, aorta, a lot of people love to go in there and do psoas work. But what research is indicating is um, the percentage of people who have aneurysms, they're undiagnosed until they rupture. Or they're found through uh, exploratory surgery or things like scans and all of a sudden, oh my goodness, you have an abdominal aneurysm. So again, the, the, the medical knowledge is what we're teaching now is unless you really know what you're doing, don't go in there and start digging around um, because you could disrupt an abdominal aneurysm and oftentimes they're undiagnosed until there's a problem. So err on the side of caution, hence the word cautionary sites. Yep, definitely. <laughs> and, and then um, with, with cancer, what do you see that in the future with cancer and massage? I'm hoping it's more accessible. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I think it should be in entry-level material. Um, it's definitely on the MT box, so people in the task force said this is stuff we should be teaching in massage schools. Um, I believe the Nick Batimba group is creating an advanced certification. Um, do you know anything about that, Ryan? No. I think that they are, uh, which means you can get an advanced certification through Nick Batimba. Um, don't quote me on that, yep. but... I think that's the direction that they're going. Um, but again, the stuff that you and I are talking about right now on this program could change in a year as we get more information. So I think the main thing I want the, the, the viewers and, and listeners to understand is that, you know, training is great, but you've got to back it up with continuing training. Uh, definitely use the, um, the websites that hopefully I'll post to your Yep. your uh, web page later that they can go to and don't go to it just once it, it, as soon as you know your client has pro prostate cancer you go research it in, in a textbook and then you follow up with the most current information from those authoritative sites like the American Cancer Association or the Man American Cancer Society um, but again um, that's where I see the direction going I, I think it needs to be more accessible. Oh, let, let me read you something. Oh, hang on. i got to disappear for a second. Okay. okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, about three years ago, I took a uh, pathology course for nursing students at our local university. And the professor started out with this quote. And it's, it's like, oh, my gosh, when you think about it. But this is the quote. And it's from a, from a medical book of... 2007. Imagine inviting 12 friends to a dinner party, six men and six women. Look around the room and consider this. Sometime in the future, two of the women and three of the men will develop cancer. So with that quote, you need to understand how prevalent this is. I believe everyone's life had been touched by cancer, whether or not a family member, a friend, a client, um, themselves. Um, I mean, this is something that is, and, and the incident rate increases with age. So we do hear about the person who's 20 who has breast cancer, the person who is in their teens and they have lymphoma, but the vast majority of cancer cases are, are in people who are 65 years and older. So, um, you know, it's, it's, and actually, uh, there's this great chart I, I like to use that has the causes of death um, ranked 1 through 10, and then they're, they're linked to age groups. And um, children who, you know, who, who die typically is, is accidental injury. Um, but you get to about 35 years old to like, I want to say it's 55, the number one cause of death is, is, is a malignant neoplasm which is another word for cancer. And um, after about 65, it, it goes to heart disease. But, you know, cancer, and, and then second is, is cancer. Um, but it will affect 
all of us, so it needs to be more accessible. And you had Rick Morgan on earlier this year with the, with the pregnancy yep. uh, massage, and I was listening to, to him, and that's one thing that I really am so thrilled that they're doing is what he did was, and I'm hoping that maybe the society could do this, is they actually wrote a curriculum for massage schools and said, you know, it's great that they want to take advanced trainings when they get out of school, but let's put it in the schools too. They need to have some information while they're in school because they're going to have clients who are pregnant. What are you going to do if you don't get the training? I can't touch you. Yep. Same thing with <laughs> cancer. You know, and there more benefit can come from uh, getting a massage than not if, as long as you, you, you use common sense and learn to make safe practice decisions. It's not that hard. So our job as educators is to empower these therapists, to empower these students so they can have the information and the confidence to not be afraid. Yep. And then there's a few um, questions in the chat. Um, is there any cancers you should stay away from or play more cautious with? Oh, let me think. Um, my knee-jerk reaction to that question is once it gets advanced and hospice is, is brought in, there is a big shift that occurs in, in the, the treatment planning. And um, speaking about this for my own family member who, who went through hospice and died of, of skin cancer at 44. And um, I can remember being in the massage. This, this will answer the question, so bear with me. Okay. I can remember uh, being in the room with, with, with my sister-in-law, and she was swollen, and she, and she had a lot of pallor, and, um, I mean, a lot of clear contraindications, everything I've ever been taught. And I'm going, I know she wants a massage, but I just it's not in her best interest. And, and the nurse kept saying, do whatever makes her happy. And I kept going, but she's got this and she's got this. And it's like the nurse kid said, do whatever makes her happy. You know, she's dying. You know, you know, comfort care, palliative care. And I was like, it, it took me a couple of times of hearing it. Again, the first time wasn't enough for me. But after about the second or third time I went, oh, yeah, okay. So I just gave a loving comforting massage and I enjoyed the experience she enjoyed the experience but uh, but again to answer the question is if the cancer has reached stage four and hospice has been called in then um, actually more often less time but more frequency and just make them happy so you, you cannot hurt them so good question yep and then another one, um, you kind of answered this before, but um, d does she have any just wait, does she have any recommendations how to make oncology uh, massage more accessible? And you talked about the internet and stuff, but is there any other ways? <laughs> I mean, I, if you think about it, it's it's all about logistics. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, I love to see something that we could put on a smartphone. Chat rooms are great. You know, um, I think that the body work massage professionals has a group. On oncology massage that you could you could go check out, um, but I think networking with other other uh, other therapists about it. But um, right now there's slim pickings unless you're willing to go to the expense of going to a workshop. Um, does that answer your question? But again, I, I'm hoping that distance learning is 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 changing already the landscape of our educational systems, and um, some for the better. I mean we, we're still in some growing pains. I know that. Um, I am a, uh, I'm getting my master's in instructional technology and it's really interesting to see some of the, you know, some of the pitfalls, but it has a huge potential to really bring this valuable information into the homes and offices of our, of our massage therapist. Yep. And then, and um, increase client care, yep. the quality of client care. And then um, somebody in the chat asked, um, can we take a class on oncological um, massage when we're still in school for massage? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what a great person to even go take it to that level. Bravo. Yes, you can definitely do CE classes, continue education classes while you're in school. And um, in fact, you might be easier to teach because you haven't taught all this nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, 
so uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, because I remember back in the '90s too, for with any kind of major surgeries, we were we were supposed to wait at least four to six weeks and everything else, and it's just yeah, and, it was ten days. Yep, <laughs> yeah, it was ten days. And again, it was so cool uh, when I was approaching that the whole concept, and it's based on. Um, the blood clotting process after they have surgery, and again, surgery is one of the one of the main, and actually one of the best treatments for uh, for pe people with cancer. Uh, it means that it's localized, and that and that can be just removed. Does that make sense? Yep. It has it has become systemic. Um, I mean, the fact that your father just had his prostate removed, no chemotherapy, no radiation, is really good news. Have you ever, ever thought about it that way? Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Cause, um, yeah. Cause he was, he, he was excited in a way just because he got regular prostate exams and stuff too. So it actually helped. So definitely keep up with those things. <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah. I'm into that. Yeah. Um, I've lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> um, can, have you ever heard of um, massage actually spreading cancer at all or have any complications or any side effects or? The only thing that I've heard of is that if um, the client has had surgery, let's say a radical mastectomy, and lymph nodes were removed, and they had an arm affected uh, by lymphedema, if, if a client was not trained in a, appropriate advanced protocols, you can cause the lymphedema to increase. Um, and so it's better to leave it alone. But again, the information can come from the client. They can say, and most of them will say, don't touch this arm. Um, I've had a couple of clients who've had um, mastectomy. One is affected by lymphedema. One is not. So, it, you know, you really just have to ask the client questions. But if you do use aggressive techniques, too deep of a pressure, you'll actually cause the lymphatic vessels to close and could increase the lymphedema that's in the arm. So that's the only thing I could think of that could be um, not beneficial to the client and, and not uh, and ill-advised. Okay. And, um, There's probably others, but just off the top of my head. Yep. And do you teach regular classes uh, around the United States at all? Continue. Well, ahead. I decided to have children at an older age, so leaving the kids is pretty hard. Um, I like to travel. I, I, I made my, my husband a promise I wouldn't do any traveling until the kids turned seven, and they turned seven, and they turned seven last year. <laughs> so uh, I'm just. And we had twins um, when I was 43. So, oh, I guess I just gave my age away. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so I did, I'm doing some national speaking now and, and loving it because it's just something that um, I enjoy very, very much. And again, I'm hoping to get more involved with, with the whole distance learning concept and making and using good educational strategies um, to be able to give it to more therapists because we all need it. Yep. And then somebody asked, uh, where in Arizona will you be in 2012? Um, I don't have a location. We, we're just sending emails back and forth. Okay. Um, I'm going to say Tucson, but if we're Facebook friends, and I hope everyone listening, watching, yeah. will Facebook friend me. <laughs> but, um, but I do, because I mean, it's a great way to keep in touch. And sometimes as I'm working on chapters, I'll throw questions up. You've, you've probably seen it, Ryan. Yep. You're good at that, too, by the way. Yeah. I'll just throw questions and just kind of re refreshers of information about reciprocal inhibition and, and catabolism, just the, the things that, that, are, that are taught in massage school. And uh, I want to say Tucson, but it might be Phoenix. But it's, I think it's January 13th and 14th. Yeah. But we're just now let, laying down the information. I think that we'll be doing a little bit on geriatrics, a little bit on um, medications and massage therapy, and a little bit on ethics. Okay. So it'll kind of be a well-rounded thing. And then um, Herb in the um, chat asked too, um, what about, um, you, are you coming to Florida anytime soon? And just invite me. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I, I, remember I told you I hate paperwork? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sending out emails to many of the education chairs for the um, AMTA. And I've done the... Um, the World Massage Conference twice. That was a really cool thing. And um, I'm not going to do it this year, but i um, just getting too busy. But, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely see what I can do. Um, I'd love to go to Hawaii. I've actually I put my little name in the hat for the Hawaii <laughs> chapter of the ATA. 
<laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to do more lecturing. And, and I tell you what, the more I lecture, people come up with some great ideas. Those go into my future lectures. Um, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's a good learning experience. And what I love about you too is um, you're doing videos. I love seeing massage therapists do videos. And yep. well, I got to get more. I, I I took a bunch in '09, and then 2010. That's when I been, was writing the book. That took a lot of my time. I just did three. Or, oh, I know. I did like six videos with Oakworks uh, right before I went to the World Massage Festival. That's when I saw you. Yep. And um, we did a geriatric massage one, abdominal massage, T and J. Um, lower back with QL. Um, just a lot of cool stuff with with them. So they they should be editing soon. And um, I hope I'm not driving them crazy. But uh, I, I asked them to let me put those little text boxes like you can do on uh, YouTube. Yep. Because I love that. I love that <laughs> when you're giving a video and you can do that. And um, so we'll see if they let me do that or not. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you see any uh, more books in the future for you? Whew. The people who write more than one or two books blow my mind. I don't know how they do it. Um, I'll just keep updating editions. I believe that's going to be where, where my, I mean, my, my, uh, my strength is in entry level. I do consider cancer and massage entry level. Um, although there, they, you can get advanced certifications, and I, I think it needs to be taught in the classrooms when people are getting their basic training, and not wait, wait till afterward. Um, and that—that's my passion. My passion is—is—is is, is is, if you're going to affect the profession, you got to get them when they're in the classroom, not not when they're graduated. So I'm going to keep pushing to be in the classrooms. Okay. With with textbook or video or, or whatever, I, Facebook, whatever I can get. Yep. And um, when um, somebody in uh, chat asked too, when are those videos going to be available? Do you know? Um, Bug Oak Works. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes they have them. They just haven't released them yet. So um, you know, uh, I would uh, sometimes a squeaky wheel gets the oil. You know. So whoever's asking, uh, Oak Works has a Facebook page too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, so put on there. So when's the Salvo video coming out? Thank you. you can do the same thing too, Ryan. You know, there's power in numbers. Yep, exactly. I'll just send everybody over there right now, okay? Yeah, I may get an email from them saying, what did you do? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. So um, has running a school um, during the whole recession and stuff been hard then? Um, it, it has for us, um, you know, I think all massage schools are, are feeling the effects. We've had a little bit of a drop in enrollment. Um, Sally Mae, just, you know, all that happened. We, you know, it's, it's just really hard for people to get a hold of money right now. And, um, you know, and they've, they're totally changing. Uh, they're changing the way they're doing a credit hour. Have you heard about this yet? Uh, the, uh, um, no, because um, we do a different accreditation and stuff to where I work and stuff like that. But yeah, but don't be surprised. This probably will affect you guys too. What they're what they're doing now is for every credit hour, uh, you have to include two hours of either home study or distance learning, and it's for all Title IV schools, all 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 schools that get federal funding. I think it's going to start later this year. Wow! And so, we'll, we'll, yeah, I yeah. mean, it, you'll research it. You'll, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. um, so what we did to prepare for it, I mean, textbooks have got to be ahead of the game, be proactive. So what we did is in our new lesson plan, there is, you know, every, every objective has at least one uh, online activity. And it can be a, a web quest. It can be an online discussion forum about cancer. Um, but, it, it, again, it will change the face of education. So um, I could probably get you some research on that or for your school, yeah. but it's something that a lot of the associations are talking about, definitely the publishers are talking about, because we have to be ready when that change comes to prepare the instructors for it. And it could be a, a, what's called a reflection log. There are all kinds of things you can do, but it, it's, it's to bridge the gap of not just what you're learning in the classroom, but also facilitate what these guys are doing at home and bring that back into the classroom. 
Oh, God. More, more hands on in sense. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I've been teaching for a little, almost 11 years now and stuff, and I've seen so many changes over the years. It's just insane. And with well, you, you teach the yeah, students, yeah. empowering them to, you know, you know, go find the information. It's, it's called constructive learning, if you know anything about the, 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 yep. the learning theory. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, and 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 then um, you, do you still have your your you still have your practice then too then? I do. I I am blessed to have you know I probably do about five clients a week, and um, sometimes as many as seven. But uh, but again, teaching and, and writing and children take a lot of time. Yeah, I can definitely you know see that. It. Yes, definitely. Yes, and sleep is overrated. So that's all I know. <laughs> And then, um, um, what's your schedule like for the next year or so? Do you have any events besides the Arizona one? Um, not yet. Again, I'm just now putting my feelers out. Um, I'm probably one of the few educators, uh, or textbook authors, I should say, that spends a lot of time with the teaching ancillaries, the lesson plans, the PowerPoints, and, 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 and such as that. So I like to do my own, and it's very time-consuming. I just finished Chapter 21 tonight, the 256 slides. Oh. <laughs> but I mean, it is, it's, it's 14 lessons of muscles and bones. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, you know, you have to break it down. Yeah. And you have to have it graphic rich. People don't want to look at a slide of text. They want to look at pictures. Yep. <laughs> and um, and i got to tell you, speaking of online and education, the, uh, the PowerPoints now include links to go to the online resources that accompany the, the, the textbook. So you can be in the classroom, doing a PowerPoint, click on a hot link, and it will take you to an activity. That's cool. <laughs> and then your husband in the chat says she, she sleeps at red lights. <laughs> uh, oh, dear, oh, dear. Thanks, yep. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> And um, for people that haven't seen your pathology book, um, does it? Uh, how many? What kind of chapters do you have? And what? And do you have a lot of pictures in there too? Oh, hey. you want to hear a story? Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to see. So um, my editor calls me. She says, "Oh, I got to tell you this hysterical story. Your pathology uh, contract was approved, but they made a mistake. Uh, they didn't realize we had uh, agreed." to have 800 pictures. Typically, textbook, I have about 550. Isn't that hysterical? You'll never use that many pictures. <laughs> 800 pictures. 800 pictures. But what's cool about the pathology book is, I mean, you want to see what a ringworm looks like on an Afro-American and a Caucasian, don't you? Yeah, big That's time. two pictures right there. You want to see what uh, early stages of rheumatoid arthritis and advanced stages looks like don't you? Because you're going to be having clients that are in different stages of, of d d disease. And, I mean, don't you want to see what cancer looks like? Yes. I mean, it's one thing to talk about it, but um, there's just some, I mean, to me, pictures are so much better than text. In fact, um, that's kind of what happened when, I, when the Principles and Practice books came, came out. I started writing online courses for the pathology book, and it literally changed the way that I write because you can't put 250 words on a screen. So you, you would take, think about it. Yep. You, you, have, you have to look at five paragraphs and come up with the seven most essential sentences. Does that make sense? Yep. And I got really good at it. <laughs> really good at it. Yeah. So actually, a lot of a lot of uh, wordiness uh, was taken out of this new textbook. Even though it has more chapters, it's it's tighter writing. I also got rid of the summaries. Who really reads those? Yep. Do you? No, I ever no. read summaries. Uh, but the pathology book um, has a first chapter on um, disease awareness. Um, there's a chapter on treatment planning. I am like the queen of treatment planning. I, I could do a class just talk about treatment planning. <laughs> we, I use a PPALM method, P-P-A-L-M, over, over the soap and the API and the care notes that other people use because it's more geared toward massage clients. 
uh, P-P-A-L-M, P stands for purpose of session, which you have to know. Um, uh, pain, the, the second P is pain and discomfort. The A is for allergies and skin conditions because the client may not put emphasis on a skin conditions like psoriasis or, or uh, eczema unless you ask, do you have a skin condition? So we teach our therapists to ask questions using the PP. Uh, ALM uh, assessment domains. Domains. The L is for lifestyle and vocation, and then the uh, the M is for uh, medications and uh, medical conditions. And that's chapter two. Chapter three is on medications. You got to know them. Oh, that's huge because and the thing is, so many massage huge. therapists need that information, and you know. Yeah. And and it's and it's it's really the, the the side effects to the medications. I only included the ones that are pertinent to massage therapists. You know, dizziness, uh, vertigo, um, changes in gait. Um, it's a couple of uh, antidepressants. You have to be real familiar with certain kinds of uh, severe muscular pain that warrants a severe comp uh, complication. Get them to, to the doctor. Um, that's uh, then it goes into the regular pathologies, the, the dermatologic, the neurologic. Um, gastrointestinal, you know, the, the common ones that you can think of. There is a uh, section on cancer, that's chapter 14, and chapter 15 is a whole section on mental disorders, um, bipolar, affective seasonal, um, uh, general anxiety, phobias, uh, PTSD, huge. Um, a lot of people are suffering. And, um, you know, so that it's just a really great, I think, balanced um balanced source of information. Oh, I, another thing that's in the new textbook <laughs> is um, emergency preparedness. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It, we're, not, we're not doing enough in massage schools. No. Nope. Not nearly enough on that. I included, um, I think it's five conditions. God, it's late enough. My brain's still working. <laughs> um, we did um, heart attack, stroke, hypoglycemia, a lot of diabetics out there, um, seizures, choking. And I think that's it. But again, real basic first aid. And um, to, to teach therapists what to do if a client it has this medical c condition. And oftentimes it's just, here are the signs and symptoms. If it lasts more than two minutes, especially if these other things are going on, call 911. Yep, definitely. Yep. And, and then... Um, or Somebody in the chat asked too. Uh, what is there any certain types of cancer that benefit more from massage? Would you say? Not really. Not really. I mean, what what cancer is is a mutated cell that spreads, and it starts to. It, it's its number one purpose is is to grow and survive, at the and it will do this at the expense of of, of the health of the individual. Um, and it starts uh, affecting uh, normal function. Uh, it can start it can start to affect the anatomy. Uh, it becomes almost like a parasite. When I was doing my, my chapter on uh, on cancer, um, it's it it scared the heck out of me. What it really is, um, it does not die. I mean, I mean, you definitely get the source of nutrition is gone, which is the you. It dies, but they have a cell line that they took from a girl, I think that her name is Henrietta Lack, Lacks, L-A-C-K-S, that from the 1950s, and they have kept it alive in laboratories, and it's one of the most popular cell, li cell lines used oh, to do, do cancer research. Think about that for a second. We've had, we have cancer that we've kept alive since 1951. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's scary. I mean, you know, and it's, and it's, it's things that we do, you know, my, my husband's um, cardiologist says, what causes cancer? Life causes cancer. <laughs> I mean, if you're lucky enough to live long, then, you know, you will probably be affected by it in some way. And, um, you know, if, you know, there is an early detection, you mentioned this earlier, early detection is the best way to beat cancer. Um, but ultraviolet radiation causes cancer. Uh, food additives cause cancer. Um, you know, it's just a lot of the things that we do, smoking, un un unprotected sex. I mean, you know, it's a lot of things that, that cause cancer. And, and you know, you can't live in a bubble. Yep. You just have to you know, do the 
as, as many lifestyle changes as you can that are healthy for yourself. But then go get the, the screenings. Um, you know, the, the prostate exam if you're a, a, a male, the breast exam if you're a woman. There's all, uh, colonoscopies, especially if you have a family history. They actually, uh, you, you want to be seen sooner. Um, all kinds of stuff, you know, you need to be doing. And then somebody in the chat says, uh, we have a client that would like a massage at our school clinic. He's going through chemo and radiation right now. Okay, um, they, they can probably definitely get it done. You said chemo and radiation, is yep. that correct, Ryan? Yep, yep. Okay. Um, for radiation, you want to avoid the entrance and exit sites for up to two weeks after they have their, 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 their treatment, so make sure you're out of that window. They can still get a massage, just avoid those areas, because oftentimes they're like sunburned, like, like a radiation burn. And chemotherapy, you want to be concerned about um, infection. Um, we talked about uh, the, the mouth ulcers, the gastrointestinal distress. Um, oftentimes they may have hair loss, you know, and that's a whole issue of, you know, do you, you, do you want their, their scalp massage or not? If they have a scarf on, do they want to leave it on or not? Always ask permission before you massage the scalp area. Um, so there are some of the concerns you're going to want to have. One big uh, side effect of both chemotherapy and radiation is fatigue. And it's also uh, one uh, side effect of, of the cancer itself. So fatigue affects most people with cancer. So one thing you want to do is they may not want a longer session, so you want to be looking for those signs of fatigue and don't do a lot of vigorous massage. Sometimes a vigorous massage might make them more fatigued. Um, you know, be, if they, when they get up from the table, make sure the therapist assists them up from the table. Um, and remind them to move slowly and carefully. You know, so little things like that are very, very important, but do a really good thorough intake. If he's at your clinic or she's at your clinic, do a real thorough intake. And another thing is, this is true for really all your clients, not just for clients with cancer. But if they are seeing a, a medical doctor for any reason whatsoever, if, if they're under medical supervision, ask what kind of restrictions their doctors have placed on them. And use that information in your massage. So let's pretend um, your person with chemotherapy or radiation therapy, their physician has this particular client um, being a little less active because of its effect on them. So you, if, if, they, if they're being less active, we already talked about maybe a vigorous massage not being appropriate for them. But maybe you want to limit your use of uh, things like range of motion and stretching. You know, so again, try to, again, these, these are common sense, but you've got to get the information from the client. So that would be another thing I would uh, tell this person who, uh, who has the student clinic and a, and a client wants to come in with, with chemo. Uh, and radiation, um, but yeah, I would definitely, and find out about the areas of, of lymphedema. If they have an arm, usually it's, it's the arms um, that is affected by it. At a student clinic setting, I probably would avoid it. Oh, can I tell you another story about, about lymph, lymphedema? Love it. Yeah. Um, um, I have not taken the class in lymphedema. Um, another thing that I think would be really hard to learn uh, with distance learning um, because you have to really understand the whole pressure thing. And, uh, and I had a client, I've watched the videos, um, she has lymphedema on one of her arms, and I just wasn't getting it. I don't know why I just wasn't getting it. And, um, and she said something, and then it clicked. And she says, you know, Susan, she said, um, you ever use the dry brush like to increase lymphatic... Uh, movements before you do a spa treat, and I went, yeah, I have. She says, try that technique on me. So instead of my hands being little massage tools, dee -dee -dee -dee, <laughs> they became just a superficial brush, and, and for, for whatever reason, I got the pressure, I got the direction, but it, it took that little bit just to get it right. But again, that's something that maybe the therapist at the student clinic doesn't have yet. And so um, probably not better to leave uh, edematous areas alone. But uh, I hope that gives you some good information because a student clinic is a great way to get some experience under the supervision of, of, of a good instructor.
Yep, and definitely. Yeah. And my my student, yeah, my students, they 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 hate me in a way sometimes, just because I'm kind of throwing information at them constantly, and people with different ailments and problems, but they need that experience, and it's under you the supervised area, of course, and stuff like you said. So. Yeah, and they've got you know you to Facebook question. They got me, you know, yeah. a lot of people that who are experts are on Facebook, and are pretty accessible. So if this other person has a very specific question. They can definitely shoot it to someone who, who can give them an answer. And then we all learn, especially if, if it's on, on a post of a, a, on a wall. Then we can all learn. Yep, and it's nice on Facebook. We all play it nice, too, it seems. so. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. So far, people have got good boundaries. Yep, definitely. <laughs> and what kind of videos are you going to be doing in the future, would you think? I don't know yet. Um, most of my videos are not technique. They're more guidelines. You know, you have the information, like for cancer, you, you just use it differently. You apply it differently. Um, same thing with pregnancy. Same thing with geriatric. It's not, it's not really a technique that you're learning. It's just more, yeah, like I said, just more uh, theory and, 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 and guidelines. Um, but uh, so I haven't thought about that. Maybe that's something I'll, I'll, I'll put my feelers out on Facebook and uh, see, see what I get. Yeah, that's the nice thing about Facebook. You just put a question out there and tons of people Wham. start answering. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so what's the best way for people to get a hold of you then, would you say, the easiest? Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so are you on Facebook a lot, would you say, now then? Um, when I'm in town, which is most of the time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's just it's just simple and um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and is there any other things that um, we missed at all that you think we need covered at all? Um, let me take a peek. I think the only other thing that needs to be really um, discussed is um, to teach massage when you have a client affected by cancer to teach massage to the caregivers and to also teach the client self-massage. You know, they're already going to be under some financial stress. You want to make massage as accessible as possible. So make sure they have that accessibility, you know, through you, indirectly, through, through, the, through their caregivers, through, the, through their loved ones. Their caregivers are also feeling very frustrated, very... Um, emotional about the whole thing so it gives this gives them a tool a loving tool to feel connected to do something that that is helpful for their for their loved one who's affected by cancer that's one thing that I really really want to stress and um, and just be be very sensitive um, it's, we all think that we did not talk about that I think is important is um, we talked about the radiation entry exit points and this also speaks to the to the gentleman or lady who had the student clinic lady coming in for chemotherapy. Yep. Find out if she has what's called a central port or central line. It might be a, a, something that's uh, attached just below the clavicle on the left or the right-hand side on the chest wall. And just make sure that the therapist um, avoids the area. Oftentimes, if they're lying prone, you might want to put a soft pillow on the area or just do a sideline massage. And also, I would avoid a whole lot of joint movements on the shoulder that's nearest the port. And um, this might be a great experience. You talked about teaching your students information. Um, you know, maybe do a little PowerPoint presentation where you're showing them what a port looks like. You know, you can get pictures on Google. As long as you're using it for educational purposes, um, there's something called the Fair Rights Act, and you can definitely uh, show those kind of pictures to your students, and include them in PowerPoint presentations and such. Yes, definitely. Yeah, because and the nice thing too with your books, um, you're teaching um, tons of people even without being there. That's the nice thing about it. So you're educating everybody out there about and helping teach them the right way. And yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you want to continue teaching full time then too? Oh yeah, Te teaching, massaging. I mean, writing. They all really are. It's it's. They're all are, are tied together. And I would not feel good about being an author or an educator if I wasn't also in private practice. I think that's a very important piece of 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 successful educator. Yep. So you're in the trenches, they call it, and stuff. So. 
Yep. Take a support. Yep, definitely. So thank you very much tonight, Susan. It's been, uh, my brain's full. <laughs> <laughs> I'm biting my tongue, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for in inviting me, and yeah. um, I'm hopefully we could do this again in the future. Yes, definitely. And, um, thank you guys for posting your, your questions on chat, and um, hopefully we'll chat again on Facebook. Yep. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.